guys. Today, Coco and I are jumping on here real quick to talk about food grade diatomaceous earth. We're going to talk about the safety of using it as a topical flea powder. There's a ton of controversy on this, and the reason why is because a lot there's two different grades. There's food grade and filtration grade. And people are kind of getting misinformed by searching on the internet and not really paying attention to which grade they're actually reading about. So we're gonna get into that and I'm gonna read you a little bit of stuff that I found on the internet talking about it and the safety data sheets and stuff like that. I mean, real scientific stuff. But anyways, we'll get into it. Okay, so food grade diatomaceous earth. I've been using it for over 20 years for a flea powder and I've loved it so much for all my dogs that I have made it my business and I do sell my flea powder online for many years, but that's not my end intent is to sell you my flea powder. I absolutely love that it's natural and that it works and you can get it everywhere. You could get it local at your farm store. And that's all I want is I want to spread the correct information and have people be able to go down and buy it at their farm store or buy it on Amazon. It doesn't have to be mine. It can be anywhere. Use it on your pets. It works so good and it's natural. And yes, it that it is a fine dust and breathing any dust is not good for us, but it's not any more harmful than breathing a fine dust. Now, if we were gonna be talking about filtration grade, like I said, there's two grades. There's food grade, which is safe to ingest, and there's filtration grade, which is used for like in pools and filtrating water and stuff like that, which is highly toxic, both ingesting and to breathe it. And I think that's what happens. I noticed when I did a Google search this morning because so many people keep posting on my, my videos about, oh, it's, you know, you're gonna kill your dog and blah, blah, blah. And I understand everybody's worry. So I got on there and I was looking and AI brings up not very good stuff on Google. They immediately tell you when you Google it, I put food grade diatomaceous earth safety sheet. That's what I was looking for. And AI overview says a safety data sheet for food grade time diatomaceous earth will include, so they're not giving me the actual sheet, information about hazards, precautions, and storage. Well, of course it's gonna give me that. That's what I'm asking for. Well, AI is giving me an overview of what they've found. And I think they're using, they're pulling it, AI is pulling it not off of food grade. They're doing a little bit of food grade, a little bit of the other, because it talks about inhaling dust can cause irritation to the lungs, nose, throat, prolonged exposure can cause chronic pulmonary disease, eyes, dust can irritate eyes, redding, tearing, blurred vision, prolonged exposure can cause dryness. It goes on and on and on, but it's not, it says, it says food grade diatomaceous earth is generally recognized as safe by the FDA. It can be used as an anti-caking agent in feed or as a calcifier in wine and beer. It is also used to make, uh, it, 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 it's silicon, it, silicone dioxide can be used to make, you know, like caplets and pills that um, are compressed. So it's really good for that kind of thing too. But if you go down here and you actually get on their, the safety data sheet, it's gonna tell you a lot more stuff than what they just told you. And if you keep searching down, if just say you just did a Google search and you didn't know anything about it and you were really unsure, it says down here, um, material safety data. This comes up under a Google search for food grade diatomaceous earth. And it says danger may cause cancer by inhalation, causes damage to the lungs through prolonged or repeated exposure, obtain special instructions before use. This has, this is, uh, I don't even know what website, it looks like some, maybe a French one or something, but this is what Google is going to show you. And it's going, of course that's gonna scare you. I had that happen to me when I started using colloidal silver and I started researching it. I didn't use it for years because I was so scared of it. 
and it, you know, I, I didn't understand that. I just thought the, the internet was going to give me a lot of good information on the exact query that I asked for. That's not how it works. So we'll go down here and we're going to actually go to the actual safety data sheet um, that we asked for. And now this is from Harris Brand. That's their date, data sheet that they've collected. And, um, and that's usually a brand that a lot of people, you know, they order on Amazon because that's a food, a, a nice food grade dietary sure if you know you're getting 100% food grade, nothing else in it. And um, I use uh, Permagard because I buy it in bulk. And, um, and Permagard is OMRI. Uh, it's, you know, it's just pure 100% food grade and it has pretty much the same exact data sheet. So, it talks all about their codes, Harris Manufacturing, uh, Catersville, Georgia, <clears throat> OSHA regulatory status, is considered hazardous by the OSHA. And the reason why it's considered hazardous, right below it, it says hazard, hazards classification, no known ha hazards. Okay, it's considered hazardous, but there's no known hazards to it. And there's no pictograms required. Um, the reason why I think they do consider it hazardous is because it, it can kill, you know, like fish and bees and things like that. If it's not being used correctly, it can be hazardous to our environment. So you, you kind of want to know about that stuff and keep it in your mind. But as far as we're just talking about breathing it in for our pets and for us, um, it says hazard statement. Dust contact with eyes may cause temporary scratchiness or redness. I've not ever had that. May cause damage to organs through prolonged or repeated exposure. Prolonged or repeated exposure to excessive concentrations of this product dust or any nuisance dust can cause chronic pulmonary disease. Okay, that makes sense. But there's tons of other flea powders like with you know, like almost like a baby powder that, it, I mean, when you're applying that to your pets, you know, you shouldn't breathe any dust and no dust should be in your lungs. Now, when you're applying it to your dog, you don't want massive clouds of dust all around them in a very, uh, you know, closed up area. Like you wouldn't want to go do that in your bathroom with no window and, and hold them down and dust them and, and even then they'd have to breathe a whole lot of it to have any kind of issue. The lungs dispel all of this and this is um, amorphous silica, not crystalline. So there's a huge difference. Amorphous silica, if you dig even deeper, shows that it has no permanent damage to the lung and the lungs are able to expel it pretty easily. Kind of like breathing a uh, you know, dust in your house. It's not, it's not the same as crystalline. Crystalline is what does a lot of the scarring and all that. This powder is, a lot of people say it, it looks like shards of glass under microscope. No, that's filtration grade, not this grade. It is so ground fat, fine that it's, it, it, it doesn't have that same structure and it does not do that to your lungs. It, it, it's not slicing your lungs up and killing you. It, it, or doing any kind of damage like that. But it's not good to breathe either. So it's just, you know. But anyways, it goes on and on. First aid measures, all this. I, I will link this down below so you can uh, jump on there and, and read it for yourself. But it tells you exposure limits of natural diatomaceous earth amorphous silica is um, is better than, you know, than the crystalline, which is the filtration grade. Um, it says, um, again, dust contact with the eyes. It just mostly tells you about that. And it tells you about disposing it properly, other information. Of course, it tells you to wear gloves and all that. I think they have to do that. Um, it, it just says that it'll dry out your skin, but that, I don't know. I've been, I've been, packaging it every day for 20 years. And prior to the 20 years of starting with Diatomaceous Earth, I already had 
really bad lung damage because I grew up as a child with asthma and was allergic to horses. I took all kinds of steroid inhalers, primatine mist, all kinds of stuff. And I was always having lung issues. And then I started this as a business and I, I breathed a ton of it. And my lungs are amazingly healthy. So I don't, and I, I've used it on all my dogs who live 12, 15 years old, and none of them have ever, ever had a lung issue. So I don't understand other than it's just grabbing the wrong information and Google not showing us exactly what we've asked for. They're not showing exactly food grade. They're coming up with filtration grade and then people see that even veterinarians are saying this and it's, it's not correct information that there's a huge difference there. I just wanted to jump on and kind of talk about that a little bit. So everybody kind of understands it a little better. I do constantly tell everyone that, but you know, I reply to as many messages as I can or comments in uh, on YouTube. But, um, you know, and when I ask people to research, it's kind of scary because you might not get exactly, you know, what you've asked for. But anyways, I just want to show you real quick. Coco actually does not have any fleas. We are what we are first of February, you know, the beginning of February. And here in Oklahoma today, we are almost 80 degrees. So I would imagine we are probably going to have, we're supposed to have another cold snap, but we're probably gonna have a very buggy summer because we've had a very mild winter. But I just wanted to show you really quick. Um, now I sell this in a shaker and you can shake it on and that is a lot dustier. But here's an, a really good way to use this. And Coco's, she's almost five. And she's been dusted two or three times a year for her whole life and she's her lungs are perfect but you can take this and you can see there's going to be a little bit of dust fly away but it's pretty heavy it's not it's not as powdery as you might think and then you can take your hand like this and just push it down the back and see i'm creating a little bit of dust right in front of my nose but i'm not worried about it now it as I fluff it up, it's going to get dusty, but see, you can work it into the skin and the wind is blowing away from her head. But even if she breathes a tiny bit of it, her lungs will expel it just fine. And this is basically, I just kind of get down wind of it. I've done this in the house when we've had to, and I've even put it in my baseboards and my carpets. One time I had it everywhere because we had the worst flea and tick season ever. And I had 10 dogs in the house and we just had way too many. Now what she's going to do is she's going to walk away and she's going to shake all this off and the excess that's on the top. Now I got a lot of it down to the skin where the fleas would be crawling. She doesn't have any fleas. Like I said, I'm just kind of showing you and you can work this with your hands into your, into her feet. Now my hands feel dry, but I, I'm not going to have, I like if I don't go put lotion on or don't wash them or anything, and it's no more drier than if I were to be playing in the sand in my yard. You know how your hands when you're a little kid and then you rub them on your jeans and oh, it just doesn't feel right? Well, it doesn't dry out your skin like it says. Now, why it dries out the, the um, you know, the bugs, it, it, it's because they have a waxy outer exoskeleton and it does coat that exo exoskeleton and they don't have the ability to keep any moisture in them. It doesn't really do that to us. I think maybe it might if we were, you know, in it, in a, it, it, like we really caked it on us daily. I don't know where our bodies are too big, but it, it really works on a little tiny flea <laughs> and an ant and it does kill spiders. It does kill bees. Um, it, it's, you know, it, it will kill everything, including something beneficial. So you have to be careful with that. Um, I just basically sprinkle it on my pets and I do use it in my garden, but I, I use it very cautiously. And, um, you know, I don't sprinkle it on flowers where bees will go. I mean, bees don't usually land on the ground and walk around and stuff like that. So you'd be pretty safe that way. Um, it does work on flies and things like that, but they actually, like if a fly lands on it and he crawls across it, he really doesn't get very much on his body. So it's um, 
fleas, uh, they're super susceptible to it because they actually crawl through it on the dog in their coat and they get it all over their body. So it really works great on fleas. You do have to wait about 14 days because fleas jump off your dog and cat and breed in the grass or the, you know, the rugs, furniture, things like that. They lay their eggs, eggs hatch, and then those newly hatched fleas have to jump back on the dog and get in the powder to die. Now, if you could sprinkle it and, and be lucky enough to catch all the eggs, it will dry out the eggs and kill the eggs. Um, it's amazing that way. It won't kill things like big things like grasshoppers and stuff like that because um, they're too large. They're kind of like us. Now, if you can catch them really tiny, it, it, I've had some grasshoppers die from it. Um, but if they get really big, they, they, it, it won't kill them. But anyways, I wanted to jump on and talk about how important it is to make sure that you're really, really when you do your Google search, read and say, am I actually reading about food grade or could it be the other grade? You know, are people misconstruing the information? Do your due diligence, get on there and research, really dig deep. And I hope this helps you and please use it for this flea season. It is amazing stuff. It is a little messy, um, but you know, if you've only got to do it, just, I, I only, I don't have fleas anymore or ticks ever. So I only dust my, all 12 of my dogs about, oh, maybe two or three times a year. And you don't, if you've got a flea infestation, you're gonna have a mess. You're gonna have to do a whole lot of this to get rid of them. And, and then you gotta do your maintenance afterward after you've killed and broke, break their life cycle and you gotta keep doing it and everything. And then you can go down to, you know, how often that you do it. But anyways, I will talk to you guys later. I'll have another video coming soon. Bye.